want to put it this way. Put me in a room, put Dave Checkett and Ernie Girlfriend in a room, and they asked us to be singing like canaries. Mm -hmm. I wanted to come back to New York, and I know that's something you guys are gonna ask. Mm -hmm. I wanted to be back in New York. But very obvious, Dave Checkett and Grumpfield felt totally different because like like people would ask me, well, they said he was gonna sign you. Well, it's September. Mm. So the the, the 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 league starts in um July one. And so you got all of July, you got all of August. Mm. Now it's it's like Memorial Day weekend, I mean Labor Day weekend, and I'm like David, David. If I ain't signed out, if, if they haven't signed me after Labor Day weekend, then we're gonna go somewhere else, mm. and that's what happened. Wow! Because and and we kind of going back here, but because from my research, check it to said that you and David Falk never really gave him um, the the option would, to match the deal with Boston. You cannot match an offer with Boston when I'm a um, I'm not a restricted free agent. I'm unrestricted. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Boston was not going to let me go in the office. They put me in a room with one telephone with them looking, and I called Patrick Ewing, and I said, Patrick, if you tell me not to sign it, I will not sign it. Man. He said, mm. and he said these exact words. If they were going to sign you, they would already do it. Take care of your family. Wow, and man. Yeah. And, and, and that was that. And then they come out. On ESPN, talking about they were going to pay me more money. That was bull. Right, that's that. right, mm. right. And, and how I know was because a reporter came to me and said, you know they're going to jerk you at the end because mm. there was almost a deal for James Worthy. To and the Knicks? Knicks? Yeah, to the Knicks. Oh, we got to wow. hear that, man. We got to hear that story, X, man. Yeah. What, what was yeah, that story was for deal. Worthy? What? <laughs> and, and I think the Lakers backed out of the deal. There was a deal. A reporter told me there was a deal for James Worthy. Wow. They got him. They was going to they was gonna tell you either you want to be with us because I still had two more years. Yeah, to get me to keep the two more years, and I wanted to get out. And then when we were up thirteen games, I think, or fourteen games against Boston, mm -hmm. and they wind up tying us for the Atlantic Division. And back then, we would always play each other. Um, you either gonna play them three or six times. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm um, five times yeah, or six. Best times. of five, yeah, yeah. That year, we played them five times, mm -hmm. and they beat three two. Mm -hmm. So they win the division. I have a meet with Check It and Pat Riley. And I was like, man, I've been ready to play ball all year. Mm. And so when they told me we're going to get back to work, and I knew against Detroit I needed to have a monster series. And we beat them. And I knew I needed to have a monster series against uh, Chicago. And that's what got me the contract. Because, I mean, I turned down a contract yeah. for $2.8 million with Seattle, mm -hmm. you know, for a four years extension. And when I didn't sign that deal, that's when they start shopping me because I was like, I'm not keeping the one because I played. I would have played with the one six that I played in New York, mm -hmm. um, and then there was the one eight one eight in Seattle, and then I would have had the four year deal. I didn't want to do that. That was a long time to be locked up, and so um, I wind up uh, backing out that deal. So I had to get something that was compromised to to what I gave up. Yeah, makes sense. That definitely makes sense. Unfortunate. Yeah, yeah, they jerked yeah, me around, and I mean, I, I just and then when I get back to Battle Square Garden, everybody booing me. <laughs> <laughs> hey, when, when, <laughs> you, when you play for choice. Boston, every time man, I touch on, man. you know you play for Boston. That's that's just uh, yeah. tough, man. Tough. That's a tough one. Damn. Yeah, but but a lot of people may not know it, but you can you can always quote David on this. If I did not sign with Boston, and a lot of people don't know, there's only a few close friends know, mm. and they may deny it, but after that series with Chicago. And they were they were taking it. We were also talking with Chicago. Wow. Oh my God. Well, because because Jordan's agent, Patrick Jason, your yeah. agent was David Falk. Right. And we were talking and that makes sense. Oh, it, I was taking a chance. We were just in the early preliminaries of, of the talk. Uh -huh. And I was like, hey man, I done gave up 12.8 plus 1.8, 1.8. I gotta get something out of it. So yeah. I had five year, $13 million deal with eight million guaranteed. Wow. I took the money and ran. Mm. To be honest. So, so, so the conspiracy theory that that Jordan tried to push you to Boston to keep you away from the Knicks is is is, is that false? Are you here to debunk that conspiracy no, that's, theory? That's definitely false. <laughs> I mean, they check it them. I have to put it this way: put me in a room, 
put Dave Checkett and Ernie Griffin on the room, and they asked us to be singing like canaries. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. David had nothing to do with it. You know, it, mm -hmm. it was a situation where where um, they had all year to sign me. Mm. They had all year. I remember them telling me, we, we may want to look at a couple other people, then we're going to sign you. Yeah. You do business. You could agree with on something. I could have signed it, and we could have dated it later. Yeah. We could have mutually hands and say, hey, this is what we're giving. But their whole thing was, when I wasn't playing, after I bought my contract out, well, we'll give you 500 back, and we won't. We'll we'll, we'll let the, the offer go back, which will be give me my 500. Then I play the next year for one eight, and the next year for one eight. And I kept telling them no. Yeah. Well, yeah. listen, man, you gotta do you gotta, gotta do what's best around. for you. Yeah, man. That's Definitely why you gotta do what's best for you. That's, that's why. Baby. That's why I love the kids today. I love guys like LeBron. I love these guys because they control their destiny. And and you know how the NBA. And a lot of people yeah. don't know. But the NBA can control you a little bit. They don't control these guys because they know somebody else will pick them up. Mm. And being the owners kind of stuck together a little bit. So, I mean, I got caught up. It wasn't even a numbers game, you know. And I'm not mad at nobody get a contract, but Oak gets something like 20 million right after that, and then Mason get like 24 million. The Starks get like 24 million. And 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 to be honest, I only asked for a six year deal, 18 million. You you give Harvey Grant 18 million. And you can't give me 18 million? Yeah. Yeah. Well, and then I talk, then I didn't drop it. I said, let's do three years, 10 million. So they didn't want to do it. So, like I said, we was in a room with Dave Checkett and and the Paramount Pictures back then. What Mr. Dolan was the owner, but it was Paramount Pictures on the team back mm -hmm. then. And so, like I said, you put Dave Checkett and Ernie Grunfeld in it, they both of them be snitching on each other. <laughs> <laughs> 